Hello and welcome back everyone. So continuing our discussion about the pediatric emergency medicine. In this video, we will talk about the peritonsillar abscess. So the peritonsillar abscess, which is also known as the Quincy, is a collection of pus located behind the tonsil and it is caused by infection as shown here in this picture and it is most commonly seen in adolescents and young adults and it may lead to a serious complication such as airway compromise or aspiration pneumonia now let's talk about the etiology so it is caused by group a streptococci and mixed oropharyngeal anaerobes are the most common pathogens causing the peritonsillar abscess and more than four bacterial isolates per abscess typically recovered by needle aspiration now the peritonsillar abscess is more common than the retropharyngeal and the lateral pharyngeal abscesses explained in the previous video regarding the pathophysiology so it is caused by bacterial invasion through the capsule of the tonsil leading to cellulitis and subsequently abscess formation in the surrounding tissues regarding the clinical features so the classic presentation is an adolescent with a recent history of acute pharyngo tonsillitis who suddenly develops sore throat fever trismus which is inability to open the mouth and drooling which is drooling of saliva this occur when the patient is tachypneic means they are breathing fast and they don't have time to swallow their saliva so their saliva drools and also they may present with muffled hot potato voice and dysphagia now the physical examination reveals an asymmetric tonsillar bulge with displacement of the uvula away from the affected side and as a rule the affected tonsil is anteriorly and medially displaced so the affected tonsil is medially and anteriorly displaced and also you can see the uvula here it is displaced away from the affected side and an asymmetric tonsillar bulge is diagnostic of the peritonsillar abscess but it may be poorly visualized because some patients can't open their mouth so this finding can be hard to detect now diagnosis can be made through careful visualization of the oral cavity there will be uvular deviation as we mentioned away from the abscess and soft wallet displacement and localized fluctuance and in toxic appearing patients examination is not preferred because it may lead to airway compromise and patient refer to CT with contrast or ultrasound but in typical cases who are non-toxic and who doesn't have respiratory distress imaging studies are unnecessary examination alone is more than enough to confirm the to confirm the diagnosis now let's talk about the treatment so treatment include surgical drainage pain control fluids and antibiotics so antibiotics should cover group a streptococci and anaerobes such as clindamycin or ampicillin sulbactam intravenously fluids should be given because patients may be dehydrated because a peritonsillar abscess would decrease their oral intake because they have dysphagia they can't swallow so you have to give them fluids and pain control can be given intravenously or locally now surgical drainage may be accomplished through needle aspiration or incision and drainage or tonsillectomy and needle aspiration can involve aspiration of the superior middle and inferior aspect of the tonsil to locate the abscess and intraoral ultrasound can be 
used to diagnose and guide the needle aspiration of the peritonsillar abscess and general anesthesia may be required for the uncooperative patient. Now approximately 95% of peritonsillar abscesses resolve after needle aspiration and antibiotic therapy and the 5% remaining with the infection that failed to resolve after needle aspiration require incision and drainage. Now tonsillectomy should be considered if there is failure to improve within 24 hours of antibiotic therapy and needle aspiration and tonsillectomy should also be considered if there is history of recurrent peritonsillar abscess or recurrent tonsillitis or complications from a peritonsillar abscess. Now a rare complication is rupture of the abscess with resultant aspiration pneumonia. And with that we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please give us a like, comment your ideas and questions and subscribe. And please consider joining the channel using the join button near the subscribe button down or by following the link in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and peace.